Hey, humans. Good to see you here on the YouTube again. Uh, we are not live. We're doing a short and very concise video on a topic today. Did you hear that? Chris is doing short and concise videos. No live stream, no three hours, no needing to find exactly what you need because we are going to talk about it right here, right now. But first of all, we need to do one thing, and that is thank the man Clemens. He's on our Prusa community forums. He was a beta tester for the multi-material unit number two. Uh, he was kind enough to join me from Austria on Google Hangouts today to teach me how to do this because I had no idea how to do this. It makes sense. It fixed something for me, and I want to pass information on to you. So thank you, Clemens. I hope everyone in the in the comments can say thank you to the guy, or if you see him online, give him a shout out. He did all the magic here. I'm just regurgitating the information to you. But remember, this is short and concise video, so let's get to it. We have here Slicer Prusa Edition, the newest beta. We have a sliced Gary the Snail model by who? Roman. Thank you, Roman, for the awesome models that you keep on slicing for us multi-material users. So this Gary the Snail is a four-color print and initially had an issue with color bleed. Uh, what am I talking about? You might have seen this in multi-material prints where one color has more pigment or it's just much darker and the color doesn't let go because it didn't purge enough of that color out and you get little stripies on your prints where the previous color kind of blended with the new color. So what we have to do is we have to do something that doesn't make sense because it's it, it's not titled what you think could be titled. Um, we have to do something that's called using purging volumes and that's over here on the right hand side below the fill density and support settings here on Slicer. And again I'm using the Mac version but I believe it's in the same general vicinity uh, on the Windows version and maybe even the Linux version. Uh, but basically what we're talking about is some issues when we bleed between a darker color and again a lighter color or something that has more pigment. This is also a pigment thing. You can have filaments that have just way more pigment and they need to be purged a little bit more so to get that other pigment out. So the new pigment is the predominant color and viola you have a beautiful print. So right now I'm having, I had a little bit of issue with the black which is these little swirls these dots it's also the pupils of his eyes mixing in with my gray which is the shell and my gold which is the body of Gary the snail the green eyes didn't seem to be phased so we're gonna go and fix this using what's called purging volumes if I click on it you'll see that I have some values in here now I'm gonna clear all these 140 is the stock settings for this and we're gonna get back to these same values maybe maybe not uh, but 140 is the stock value. What is 140? Well, first before we talk about that, the first time you turn this thing on, it's going to look like this. What is this? This is the simplified version. Leave it alone, guys. It says simple. We're not simple people. We're complicated human beings. We have skin and organs and all this fun stuff. Go right to the advanced settings because we are advanced people. We have science and computers. Um, sure <laughs> so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna learn what this means and what this does so it was explained to me again thank you Clemens that uh, I'm a dummy and I should have been able to read this matrix and this matrix tells me all the fun things that I need to know and basically what it's telling me is it kind of gives me a matrix of the different color channels on my multi-material unit now mind you it calls this a white tower purging volume adjustment and it, it is a volume adjustment it's talking about how many cubic millimeters of material am i going to extrude with the new color uh, that way i get a proper purged amount so there's no color bleed from the previous color so if we read this chart reading the rows first and then the columns we are going from the tool head to the next tool head so we're going from one which uh, if we follow along one is black for me it's filamentum black two is filamentum green three is filamentum vertigo gray and four is filamentum gold happens so i've got some super awesome colors in there i don't want any color bleeding i want the purest tones and colors i want it to look sexy so we need to use this fun tool to do that um so let's go back so we know toolhead uh, one is black and that's where my issues are black isn't purging out enough so it's 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 making my pretty colors a little little darker uh, and we fix that by reading the chart and following along and I'm gonna give you some base values these are not set in stone values you can trim these you can again I, I highly recommend you busting open an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet 
or whatever, if you have a Mac, use numbers, whatever you need to keep these values stored for yourself. And we might even make a giant spreadsheet online for everyone to follow along. But for all base and purposes, these are general numbers. Feel free to tweak them. Uh, this is all about saving you a headache and also saving you filament because this can also save you filament. So uh, we are on channel one and we're, let's say we're going to move to channel three. So as we know, the multimetrial unit does a uh, ramming sequence. It wipes out a little bit, purges what material it has in the uh, print head as much as it can out of the out of the hot end. It retracts and then it reinserts a new filament from a different channel. You know, let's say we go from one to three, which is our gray. Uh, it'll then purge 140 cubic millimeters of material. This doesn't seem to be enough. So we have some general numbers that we can use. And it isn't a lot. Um, I don't want to show you the print because it, 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 these are, again, these numbers that don't matter to you. You may not have the same colors. You may not be printing the same thing. So these are just general numbers I'm going to give you. So uh, if you are having a color bleed issue, and this, is again, could be because the material is too dark or just has too much pigment. You know, some blues aren't very dark, but they do have a lot of blue pigment. <clears throat> so this could all be different, but we're going to have some base values. Our base value is going to be 200. 200 is a great ba base value. So it's just going to say uh, we're going to purge 200 cubic millimeters of material instead of 140. And this has worked. This works great for me. So we're going to go from toolhead 1. And when we uh, wipe or purge uh, an amount of material, we're going to purge 200 cubic millimeters of material instead, which should make sure we purge enough vertigo gray to push all of the black material out of the hot end. And you get pure filamentum vertigo gray. But we have the gold. The gold actually was turning quite gray. And we need to do a little bit more purging. And for me, I found out it was actually 210. And I went up to 220, went back down a little bit. I was fine. You can actually follow along. You can look at the purge block. And you can see just how quickly it transfers. So if you're getting uh, some muddied color, some, some color that has some bleed from the previous uh, uh, color that was in the extruder, uh, you can kind of watch and see how much or how little you need to tweak these. But for me, it was just a little bit more, and it was enough to push out the last of the black out of the tool head, and I had pretty, pretty gold happens uh, from filamentum. So this can also work in the reverse direction. This isn't just a one-way ticket. We're not just going to keep purging more and more. We can purge less, and this is where the power of this matrix comes in, which is why I tell you to completely skip the simplified version. Because when you're purging too black... So you're going from tool heads three and four, which are lighter and have less pigment. I can actually lower these numbers. And I found that 50 is a great starting value for a smaller number. So if I go from gray to black, I'm not going to need much material. Um, and 50 actually worked out great. The black pigment and the filament in black is very strong. And lowering it worked awesome. And the same thing worked for my gold to black. So basically what we're doing now is instead of purging more material, when we move from tool head three to tool head one, so moving from vertigo gray to black, we purge much less. We're actually purging, uh, if we did some math here, we're purging 90, is that 90? That is 90 less cubic millimeters of material. That means you're saving material on your purge. Uh, same thing when we go from gold to black, we are purging 90 less cubic millimeters of material and I'm saving you money now we are upping the purging from uh, from black to gray we are going more to gold but <coughs> if you're printing something with lots of similar tone colors you can come in this chart and literally you know to your heart's content edit your tool head changes all over this matrix and we can go down the line we can go we can be even more comprehensive like let's say we have white on tool head five and we're just having an issue again you know, we need to up uh, changing from our uh, black tool head on one to changing to white. We need to go to 210 again. It just it just needed more purging because that black was just staying in there. And we're getting grays. And the same thing from the vertigo gray. And we'll go to 200. Again, these 250, those two values are just, they just seem to work. It's a great starting point. And you can tweak this again to your heart's content. Don't, don't be fooled that this is just... You know, plug and play the number 200 and plug and play the number 50. You may need more. You may need less. 
for instance, uh, Polyalchemy Elixir needs a much larger purge because of the lastimers that are in that filament. Uh, they hold. It takes a long time to purge out the material at the hot end. So I highly recommend, you know, 240, 220 on those materials. So again, play with these settings and just know that uh, when you read the chart, again, one more time for everybody, because, you know, I didn't understand it either. So I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to ingrain this in your heads. The left is your, your rows, your right is your columns. And we're going from channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going from black to green, from black to gray, from black to uh, gold, and so on and so forth. And again, from green to black. And that, that was a fine mix. But yeah, so just read the chart and keep talking to yourself as you do it. And this chart becomes so easy, so simple that you will most likely pick this up just from watching this video because I just kept repeating the exact same things over and over and over again. So, I mean, that's it. I mean, literally, it is numbers. And the numbers make sense when you read the chart correctly. So thank you again, Clemens, for teaching me how to read this chart correctly. So uh, that's it. We're going to stay short and concise, guys. Uh, I hope this helps you on your ventures with your multi-material printing. I hope you no longer have uh, bleeding of colors onto other colors. And again, if you have other questions, drop them in the comments. I will try to get to you. I'm, I'm pretty slow at getting back on YouTube, but I'll also post this on the forums, and I, I'll even post it on the Twitter. So if you have questions there, more than happy to answer them. But this should answer everything you need to know about uh, what I like to call, again, bleed control. This isn't. This is purge volume adjustment. For all intents and purposes, if you have issues with color bleeds, you're going to go to the purging volume section, a.k.a. the color bleed control menu, um, as I'm going to call it from now on and so forth. So again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, more videos coming. And yeah, thanks again. Have a good one. Ask those questions. So we'll talk to you soon.